Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofan at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we're currently in the middle of a storm here in Belgium because holy hell, it's the wind is blowing immensely outside right now. There's a few uh, things that have been dis demolished over the course of the day, so this is uh, a later recording than I anticipated it being. But uh, today, finally, our first deck guide of the season, because I have been uh, MIA uh, a little bit because I have been swamped at work, but today we're back, we're going straight into Syndicate. Uh, we haven't really explored Syndicate in quite some time, um, and I felt like it was high time to just take another look into it. I've come up with a variation of my previous bounty deck that now includes some of the newer cards. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to be inspecting today. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Witch Hunt deck. So as you've already noticed, maybe if you follow me on Twitter, which you can do at, uh, at Trovinuts, that's just uh, T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to follow me there, I'll keep you up to date on every video that I'm, um, well, bringing out. And if there are any delays, such as this week's, uh, well, this month's, um, you'll get to know about that there as well. But uh, yeah, we're, I never really use Jackpot. Jackpot seems to me like an overpowered ability that definitely shouldn't be reworked because it kind of takes away from the soul of Syndicate. Syndicate is a faction that makes it a little bit harder to play because you constantly need to balance your corn count. And that is exa exactly what Jackpot doesn't allow you. Well, basically takes that difficulty away, which makes it a little bit too easy and too autopilot for me. Uh, what we did do in this deck is use the blood money leader ability. So eight damage, and if you go, uh, if you kill a unit that does not need that eight damage, then you gain coins equal to the excess damage dealt. So a big hit, but only a single big hit. No fancy passive ability on this one, but it should be enough to basically uh, support the archetype that we're using because we're going into a little bit of a bounty deck. Um, which means that we have a nice collection of cards that you mostly will be familiar with if you saw my uh, Bloody Bounty Bash deck guide from a while back. But there have been a few new additions, namely of course the King of Beggars. This card has undergone a few nerfs uh, lately, uh, I think two so far already, so right now it's a 1 power for 12 provisions. But again, this basically gives you free coins whenever you play a, uh, pay a tribute ability. Uh, we'll be talking about him in a minute more specifically because I'm, as always, going to go through the entire deck one by one with each and every single one of these cards. If you're not interested in that, of course, you can always just check out the deck in the, uh, on the Play Quent website. The link to that deck is on uh, the description of this video. So you can check it out over there. Don't forget to upvote it as always and you can skip right to the example matches in this video as well. If you're still here then that means you're still interested in me jabbering on about these cards so let's do just that. First up we have double vigilantes. Four power for four provisions and whenever a bounty is placed on an enemy unit you damage it by two. Very good starting engine uh, if you just want to see what your opponent has removal wise um, but if this card sticks it is actually quite powerful because every single bounty that you apply immediately gets damaged by two which uh, can make a lot of difference uh, in giving you enough coins for later on. Then we have a single Witch Hunter, uh, very simple, 4 power for 4 provisions, and on deploy you place a bounty on an enemy unit. If you're not familiar with what bounty actually does, bounty is a status effect on an enemy unit that you apply, and when you kill that unit you gain coins equal to the base power of that unit. Not the power it had when you applied it, just the base power. So basically this deck tries to balance both damage and uh, bounty apl application just to make the perfect deck for this archetype. Next up we have a 4 provision special card, a crime card, bloody good fun, that gives you 4 coins and then you spend all of your coins and damage an enemy unit by that same amount. Very easy way to get rid of all of your excess coins, um, just in case if you are expecting to gain more or for example to kill a bountied unit that has quite a lot of points on it still. Next up we have a double slander card. Slander basically is the opposite of what we just saw, the bloody good fun card. We gain three coins and we place a bounty on an enemy unit but don't do damage. There's one more card incoming where we'll do the other way around again but this is just an easy way to apply a bounty and also gaining a few coins that you can use on any of your damage dealers. Next up are damage dealers in question. So the Witch Hunter Executioner, 4 power for 5 provisions. We have two of those 
they give you two coins when you play them and on v1 so for every coin you spend on this unit you either give an enemy unit bleeding for one turn or if it has a bounty you damage it by one allowing you to kill it instantly um, these cards are our main damage dealers so very important that you don't waste these then we have the salabrandra mage which has been added uh, for one it gives you a very good support card for tribute abilities it also has a tribute ability of its own giving you those four coins back because of the king of beggars card in this deck uh, also starts at five power and whenever you pay a tribute ability also gain one coin back or two coins if you're at adrenaline five so basically reducing the cost of the tribute to two or three depending on the adrenaline level that you're at very good card uh, makes it kind of difficult sometimes to count how many coins you're going to get back because if king of beggars is still in the deck then you'll get those four coins back on top of the one or two coins that you're going to be getting back from the salamandra mage um, so there might be a few coins that you lose out on then we have purge purge is a very good crime card for this archetype so you damage an enemy unit by three and if you kill that unit you place a bounty automatically on the highest power enemy unit that is left after you killed that unit you also increase the base damage of this card by one for every witch hunter on your side of the battlefield we have quite a lot of those so this card can easily be six damage or more depending on your board state so uh, don't underestimate this card because it can easily just finish off a card that already has a bounty and then apply another bounty immediately uh, because of the ability. And then the other way around we also have the Hysteria card where you place a bounty on an enemy unit and then damage that same unit by 3 or if it already has a bounty you damage it by 6. Very good damage card as well that you can use to take out some of the engine cards. If you also have a Vigilantes on the board, you can just kill something up to 5 power in one single hit with this card. And of course gain the coins back uh, because of the bounty that you applied. I also do love the lore behind this card because this card is tied to the Scoundrel card. So the Scoundrel card we'll be talking about in a minute. But on the art of it, you can see the Scoundrel actually killing a... Um, I think that's supposed to be a goat or a deer or something like that. Um, and they hang that beast over there to make the uh, villagers believe that there's a witch in the town which uh, of course is what the Hales family actually does in the uh, the lore of this game as well. Then we have Adelbertus Kalkstein, we talked about this card uh, well quite extensively in this uh, in this uh on this channel before because uh, i made a lore video about kalkstein himself but five powers for six provisions gives you two coins and for every two coins you spend on this card you can purify a unit very good especially in this deck you need to be applying and damage applying bounty and damaging those units so those units should not be defended and those units sh should not have a veil kalkstein can get rid of both so a uh, very very powerful card in this deck and then we have Octavia Hill. Octavia Hill functions as a sort of tutor card, but not exactly. So six power for six provisions. She gained a fee ability lately, where for every coin you spend on her, you can boost an allied witch hunter by one. But on deploy, you draw up to two of Octavia's sons. We have both the Bruth and the Scoundrel in this deck, so you can get the two most powerful cards in this deck in your hand by using Octavia Hill, but you don't play them, of course. And then, of course, you also need to shuffle uh, the same amount of cards back into your deck. This is also a very good card to, if you accidentally have King of Baggers in your hand, to shuffle King of Baggers back into your deck, um, making it almost foolproof uh, mulligan-wise. Then we have our next Witch Hunter Kurt, 6 power for 6 provisions and can either apply a bounty on an enemy unit or purify any unit of your choice. Basically giving you the same, um, well a backup purify in case uh, Kalkstein either gets killed or you don't have access to him uh, because he's not in your hand. Next up of course our next damage dealer, again the card in Syndicate that you always include, Horsens Freak Show, 4 power, 1 armor, you gain 2 coins and for every 2 coins you spend on this card you damage an enemy unit by 2 as long as of course you're on the melee row but probably still the most powerful damage dealers in this deck next up we have tamara strenger usually not a card that is included in decks like these but i did find a place for her here if you start out very powerful opening move because basically you boost all witch hunters 
um, on the board, but more importantly, also in your hand and your deck by one if you pay the tribute. Um, that just allows you to gain extra points on every single card in your deck. And with King of Beggars, you get those three coins back. Um, so you don't even lose out coins wise, you can still use that in the next round. Next up, Graydon, our tall removal card in this deck. 3 power for 9 provisions, very dangerous for you as well, because of course you can brick this card. If you deploy him on the melee card, you can destroy an enemy unit with a bounty, but that of course means that you need to have a bounty on the board. If you also pay his tribute ability of 5 coins, you boost yourself by that unit's base power. Um, could be very powerful, especially when you're playing against monsters or Nilfgaard, even if Nilfgaard stole your scoundrel, because of course those 12 points can easily go onto Graydon himself, which is always nice. And now we have Savola. Savola, of course, is uh, introduced in this deck because of King of Beggars, because this card has a 9 coin tribute, easily triggering the King of Beggars almost immediately. I say almost, you will need to use another tribute ability in this deck, but there's plenty of those to get that going. Six power for nine provisions gives you two coins and if you pay the nine point, uh, the nine coin tribute, you spawn Savolos Frightener on the same row. Savolos Frightener is a 12 power six armored monster that is, uh, well, on the same row. So since you pay nine coins to get 12 points back, you basically get a 33% uptick on your coins with this card. But it's just a very good finisher as well. Then Philippa Eilhart is also in this deck basically to counter the uh, immensely powerful self wound decks, basically allowing you to uh, steal Sigvald from your opponent and gain those points for yourself. So 3 power for 10 provisions and on the ploy you spend the number of coins equal to an enemy's unit's power and seize it. So taking over one of your opponent's units. And then we talked about them already and there you can see the poor goat or it doesn't really look like a goat to me. It more looks like a, a small deer, a hind or something like that. But the scoundrel 12 power for 10 provisions and on deploy you summon the top bronze unit from your opponent's deck to the opposite row and then place a bounty on it. If you spend two coins on this card, you can also choose whatever bronze unit that you summon from your opponent's uh, deck and then place a bounty on it, of course. And for every coin you spend on this card, you automatically damage the enemy unit with bounty by one, regardless of whether that unit is behind defenders or not. So that doesn't really matter with the scoundrel. Uh, basically allowing you to steal some of your opponent's of well, valuable bronze cards from their deck if they don't have them in hand. And um, yeah, just, just like that, I have another damage dealer. So basically this deck has four active damage dealers in the sense that you can spend coins to actually damage units instead of, of course, all the special cards that you can also use to damage units. And that's, of course, the Scoundrel, Horseman's Freak Show, and the Double Witch Hunter Executioner. So keep those four in mind because that's basically the balancing act that you'll have to do. Next up, we have the King of Baggers himself. So I talked about him already. He has a fee ability um, where for every coin that you spend on him, he will boost himself by one. But more importantly, while he's in the deck, whenever you pay a tribute, you get that tribute back up until a total of 12 coins. So basically this card is one point and 12 coins for free. As long as you manage, of course, to pay those tribute abilities. Um, with Zavola, you only need one other tribute um, that is not the Scoundrel. The Scoundrel is just not enough because Zavola is 9, Scoundrel is 2, giving you 11. But every other uh, tribute ability should get you the King of Beggars out. If you um, trigger the tribute ability of Graydon, Tamara and the Salamander Mage, that was what I was going to say, then you get 12 as well. And there's a few other combinations because, of course, our next card also has a tribute ability. You usually don't use this tribute ability, the, pro the Professor, uh, 6 power for 12 provisions, and on the point you put a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by 4, allowing you of course to gain those coins back if you kill that unit. If you use his tribute ability, you ignore the target's armor. Um, so that's another tribute tree ability, but usually you don't want to spend your coins on that because it's not going to be that useful aside from maybe against something like Skellige or Dwarves. 
And then the final card, definitely the most powerful card in this deck, the Brute. Six power for 13 provisions, um, has zero profit to start and also a deployability where he boosts himself by zero. But the boost is always equal to the base power of the last destroyed enemy unit with a bounty, which can be quite a lot, especially in this meta. And whenever, whenever you place a bounty on an enemy unit, you also increase this unit's profit by one. So if you have placed five bounties over the course of the game, the Brute will give you another five coins on top of all of that. Then of course our stratagem gives you five coins, the Tiger's Eye and then our leader ability we talked about already, just a big big smack onto one of your opponent's units. So very control heavy deck but in this meta that is definitely warranted because there's a lot of engines uh, floating around. So uh, let's head into a few example matches where we hopefully can demonstrate the power of this deck. And our first enemy of the day is uh, opponent of the day is Vampires. Vampires is always a tough matchup, of course. There's a lot of fancy uh, engine abilities that could be quite painful. Um, but as a start, we actually have quite a nice starting hand. Of course, we need to get rid of the King of Baggers, but other than that, this is actually pretty good. Um... I'm gonna kick the Salamandra Mage for now. We get the Mara Stranger, which is good since we start. So I might use Kalkstein to get rid of the Defender, but in that case, I don't need Kurt. So let's get, yeah, bloody good fun is fine enough. So let's start with Tiger's Eye. Do I need to start? I don't really need to start with Tiger's Eye, do I? I think it's probably better to start with Vigilantes because I can react to whatever our opponent throws at me in that way. And then we get the Nekorot as the first card bleeding our poor little Vigilante immediately. I think Hysteria is enough for now. Uh, I don't have that many bounty cards at the moment, but I think Hysteria is just fine because that is going to kill the Nekorot in one go and gives us four coins so we don't need to use the Tiger's Eye just yet. Do need to be careful, of course, because I do want to avoid um, not having something to kill the Fleeters with. Because the Fleeters are the biggest problem in a deck like this. And we get Nekorat again. That is fine. I think it's high time that I use the Scandrel first. Because um, the Scandrel has the double benefit of giving me a bounty and a damage dealer in one go. So the Scandrel goes on the board, pay the tribute, and then we can... Ooh, that means that they have both Fleeters in hand. Fine, I suppose. So let's get the Alp out. Um, that hits. We get the two coins back because of the King of Baggers. And then we use the Scandrel to hit the Alp and kill it. Against Vampires, it's actually pretty good to get the Scandrel out as quickly as possible. Because the Scandrel will be resurrected by uh, the Witch's Sabbath as well. We also have two Witch Hunters on the board right now, so our um, Purge will do five damage at the moment, but can of course be increased. And then we get the Plumert giving us some bleeding over there. Probably trying to get the Scandrel as low as possible. I could just go for Purge now, but I don't really see the use of it just yet. So let's just use Tamara Stranger. All right, now giving us that uh, tribute ability, and that's going to boost every single witch hunter everywhere. And we, of course, get those three coins back because the King of Baggers now is down to seven. So with Savola, we have enough to finish that off. And we get a double plumert now, some more bleeding on the board. Not that I really need to worry about anything here. I can still kill the Fleeter in one go if I want to, so. Probably best to purge Nekorot now, unless I put down the Witch Hunter Executioner. It's probably better. I can use the Witch Hunter Executioner to apply some more bleeding because I have so many coins that I don't know what to do with it. So uh, there we go, and then tap the Tiger's Eye so we have those for later on. And there we get an Alp, adding more bleeding on the board. It's plenty of bleeding. I'm gonna purge the Alp. I don't know where the bounty... Oh, that's actually really good. Uh, and now I can do this and this, and then add some more damage over there, and we get 8 coins for our trouble. And every remaining unit is starting to bleed, but our Vigilantes just died. Do want to get that first round, um, just so I can have final say. I could just apply some more bleeding and then do bloody good fun. 
Although I am starting to waste a lot of my units here. They had a pretty good hand to start bleeding me with. I'm gonna just use the Witch Hunter Executioner twice here and then bloody good fun straight onto the Anal Conqueror. Yeah, like this. This does not seem to be a Witch's Sabbath based deck then, because they haven't come out just yet. Yeah, okay, and there we get the ball. So we have final say, hopefully, in the next rounds. We do need to keep a lot of our damage dealers, which we of course spend a few of already, uh, for that final round. Um, I'm not gonna push. We get a single bounty card, the Witch Hunter. Um, right now the Brute is at 3 and 4. So I can get red, ooh. This is almost perfect, although I would like a few more bounty cards. I think I can get rid of the Witch Hunter Executioner for now, since I have Horsen's Freak Show. And we get Graydon. And then we get Nagelfar, meaning that they can choose which card is on top of their deck. But of course that also means that they need to play a gold card, and that gold card is that love. So I'm guessing their hands must be really good if they keep cards like that just for the pass around okay so this might be pretty tricky um, we do have quite a few damage shooters we can get rid of the defender as well we have vigilantes now I'm gonna get rid of the salamandra mage because it's not that good of a oof, 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 oof. so three bounties three bounties is that enough Three bounties. I could get rid of Vigilantes, um, but I risk pulling King of Baggers, so I really can't. So yeah, let's finish redrawing. We might start with the Katakon. Okay. Um, that means I can actually start out rather safe. Um, the one thing... Yeah, I should probably start with Vigilantes, just to see if I can get the most out of my bounty application here and now we get the defender that is fine i can purify that away um so kalkstein purify defender there we go just playing out the cards that we were expecting and then we get our first fleeter fleet is going to seven automatically there's not much we can do about that in the first place um, I get four coins back if I hit that fleeter. Um, but I'm gonna have to put down Horsen's Freak Show first. So I have a damage dealer for the next fleeter that's coming in. So, Horsen's Freak Show, and then hit the fleeter over there. So we wanna get rid of those fleeters as quickly as, as quickly as possible. We have extra points on all our bounties. We have another fleeter, so that is fine. Um, because I'm going to go to... Yeah, that's all the Fleeter's gone, I think. Because I only need six coins to kill the Fleeter. Um, and I'm going to get those with this. So there we go. We get two extra damage from the Vigilantes. And then we kill the Fleeter, giving us four coins for later on. So I still have two ways to apply a bounty. And we still have the Vigilantes to get some more uh, points incoming. Although those might die now from what's his name oh the curse of the blood moon i can't do savola just yet i need a few more coins for that so i think i'm gonna use professor on the katakan um adding him over here as well so they have another target for uh the bounties there and that is gonna kill the katakan giving us max coins immediately and that is fine, that is exactly what I wanted, because now I am available at any point to use Graydon. And then we get the NL Conqueror. Um, I am going to purify Horsen's Freak Show now, just to have him survive one more turn. Um, I can hit... how many do I get from the Brute now? Five. So I can hit the NL Conqueror twice, I don't really care about that, and then use the Brute can also go on the front row basically uh, just to spread out those targets a little bit and we get five coins and five points on the brute so that is a okay i could also purify the vigilantes but it's not gonna matter um i'm gonna get the damage off the next bounty anyway we get feast of blood killing that was a big waste 
Um, I can now do Savola. Just to postpone the final card so I can get my bounty going. Yeah, we'll see. So, Savola now. Going on to pay the tribute. We get seven coins back from that. And we can put all of those... Well, I can put actually three of those, two of those over there. And then I still have the option to use um, the tribute ability on Graden if I want to. And then we get Oria now. Oriana is going to be the biggest target that I can kill. Um, so let's place... The last card is going to be Regis. So I don't need to worry about anything else. So Oriana is going to be 10. Regis, of course, is going to be even bigger. Um, but I can spend my final coins on the King of Beggars then. Because it's going to be more efficient that way. Um, so... Um, yeah, it's going to be more efficient. Let's just put them all over there. And then we can kill Oriana with the final Graydon. But it's going to be close, because Regis is a lot of points. Oh, it's not Regis. Why would you not put that on the... F you know what I'm... Okay, fair enough. It's not Regis. There we go. We got it. <laughs> but even with Regis, I would have won that. Regis would have been about 21 points. Um, so that would have been just enough. Because I would have been able to... I, I would have gotten still like 13 points. So that was that was okay. And we get Northern Realms Inspired Zeal. That is actually a better matchup than you might think. Because uh, usually that goes into mages. And I have a lot of tools to actually counteract that. Which is good. We have a few fine starting place. Uh, but I do want to see some more offensive options. Hysteria is fine. I'm going to need to purify. Uh, so I think we have a double damage dealer. We have Vigilantes. One, two, three, four. Technically five bounties. So I think this is pretty good to start with. I could get rid of the Witch Hunter to see if I can get anything else. But usually having this as a body on the field as well is fine. So I'm going to just do this. So I'm going with Tiger's Eye. Not just yet. I can just do Vigilantes now. And... See what happens next. The coins from Tiger's Eye are better kept for later since you can basically decide when you're going to be using those. Um, we get a zeal there. Why would they want a zeal immediately? Now I don't have a damage dealer on the board just yet. So I do like to be pretty aggressive at the beginning here. I feel like they're setting that up for uh, Rafford's Vengeance. But you have Inspired Zeal so I set that up. Seems a bit weird to me. I could just Hysteria it. Uh, but I feel like I need to use Hysteria for something later on. So I'm just going to use the... Oh, I don't use the Scoundrel. I need to use Tiger's Eye. And then the Scoundrel to see what their deck actually holds. If there are alumni in here... Ooh. Oh boy. Uh, I can actually get the Commandos. This is a Commandos deck. So they're zealing for the extra Commando. I could kill all of them. If I want to. Yeah, I can actually kill all the commandos in one go. So we have the defender, but we have a purifier for that. Um, so I'm not going to even give you a chance here to put your commandos on the board. That is actually really funny because I completely counteract that deck. There's not much you can do to stop me here. Because Roach is going to damage you, get an extra commando. And yes, you can zeal that one. But there's only one other one on the board now. So if I bounty that one, I can just kill it. Um, so you don't get any extras off. So that's thick. And damn, damn. That gives me a full coin pouch. Still slightly ahead, but our opponent already used uh, their leader ability. They won't be able to use that um, ability just yet. So I'm thinking of setting up the Witch Hunter Executioner here so I can start... Spending some of my coins elsewhere. It is wasting two coins here. But I'm going to start spreading this out a little bit. Because I'm going to be killing the next one either way. Uh, and I get some extra damage out of the uh, Vigilante still. So that is fine. We still have a lot of bounty cards. We get double Megascope. So let's bounty that commander then. 
Um, and I can just kill it without worrying about my coin count here. Um, and then I can just put... I just need to keep two coins even. So I can just be pretty aggressive with this. Ideally, I play uh, Tamara in here somewhere as well. But I don't think it's necessary. Now we got reinforcements, so there's another blue stabs commando. And that one can actually be sealed. I should have killed that second commando at the moment I had the chance. I mean, sure, I could kill them. I don't think there's much point in it. The defender is not coming back, so might as well just melee... No. I'm just going to use Tamara here. There are plenty of them on the board already, so I don't really need to worry about more commandos. And if our opponent doesn't pass, I think I might actually. Yeah, I should have killed the second commander the moment I could. Uh, that would have wrecked their entire strategy. But I would have lost my leader ability. So there's still options here. I'm guessing I should push. Um, but the problem is the moment Pavetta comes out... There's going to be a lot of commandos on the board. Uh, I guess we'll see. I'm going to push. Uh, I don't need Octavia heal, since I had the Brute in, deck in hand already. And now I risk pulling the King of Beggars. But on the other hand, I can still pass if I pull the King of Beggars. And I pull Savola, so that is even better. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. So either they're going to be forced to play their commandos anyway, um, or we'll see what happens. The Brute is at 3 and 4, so that's 14 points. I'm guessing Pavetta is first. Yeah, there we go. That's usually the thing they go for. Um, I am going to bounty Pavetta first. So that's going to put it up to 4 already. Uh, and then I can set up the damage dealer afterwards. Which is going to give us a nice batch of coins. Also giving us a 6 on the Brute. Uh, that's going to be 4 profit and 6 boost. So that's 13 points and 4 coins. Not too shabby. But I am wasting my better cards here. Uh, I still have the Professor in deck. Which is always handy against Commandos. So that's a Siege Ladder. I can just put Horson's Freak Show down now um, and kill Pavetta. Should probably also kill the Siege Ladder. They use that to move a commando to the other row. So that gives me um, 4 profit and 6 points on the Brute. Ooh, that is not a good sign. The Brute is going to be the better option here. Um, I'm going to keep the 4 coins I'm even getting from that because then I can use Savola and just. Whack his ass. I am at 7 with the King of Beggars, so he is going to come out. And I can definitely st still kill the next card with the uh, Hysteria card there, so... Should be good to go. And we get Renew. Renew is going to get the Defender out. That is fine. I'm going to get 7 coins when I kill that thing. So if I... So I hit Dolmimir. That gets rid of the shield. I'm going to use Hysteria. Which is going to hit it for two. And then I can use Horson's Freak Show again to kill it. And that gets us eight coins, which is still enough for Savola. I'm going to lose one coin. But it's better than nothing. And now I get Alzu's Double Cross is going into Fall Test. Oh boy. Oh boy. And Fall Test is not going to do anything. Yeah. Aside from die, because, um, yeah, Savola is going to now pay the tribute, get the King of Baggers out, and I can just uh, whack King Foltest over the head with blood money, yeah. That was, I think they misplayed? I don't know how else, because in that deck you either have Oneromancy or uh, Amphibious Assault to get another commando out of the deck, so that would have been easy to fix. And then you renew Pavetta and not the Defender. So either they didn't understand the deck entirely or... Yeah, not sure. For the final match of today, we're facing Skellige. Skellige Pirates. That might, of course, be problematic. Since, of course, we're trying to damage a lot of stuff. And 
pirates have armor that can uh, circumvent that damage. We don't start, but we do get Tamara Streng. Which begs the question what we need to do here. We still have Octavia Hills, so we could get rid... I'm gonna get rid of Tamara Stranger. I don't have a good way of getting coins. And we get the King of Beggars. That is fine. Okay, so we get the boat to start with. And I see I don't have a damage dealer. So that means that I could use the Scoundrel. But yeah, it's probably the better option. Um, so the Scoundrel into whatever comes there. And that gets bounty immediately. I didn't have any coins yet, so... That's basically what we end at first. So as long as our opponent doesn't kill... Oh, wow. Immediately with Junot. Fair enough. Um, that means I'm going to just try not to play into their hand. Um, I'm going to start gathering some coins instead. Not that I have a lot of options, by the way. I could do Slander first into one of the crows. And that gives me three coins and then I'm going to use Purge afterwards and get two more coins. But that's basically going to be it this turn. There we go. And then we get Purge on the Crow. And that bounties Junot. And that's basically it. And then we get the Hime Skull. Yeah, I'm going to keep it like this. The first round was a bust because of the fact that I, I basically played the Scoundrel a bit too early. So let's just hold it off over there. Very aggressive play there to get your uh, tall removal card immediately on the board. Um, there's still a lot of fun things that we can do, but again, we need the coins for it, which is not the case at the moment. We do get King of Beggars in our hand again. So might as well get rid of him. Although I could keep him just to play in conjunction in conjunction with Octavia Hale. Um, we don't need bodied bounties this time. Uh, the rest is basically fine. I could use Octavia Hill to get rid of the King of Beggars into the Brutes. Get rid of Vigilantes. And we get another um, Hysteria card. We get another Uncreate Longship. Of course we do. Might as well slander it up again. And then just play the, uh, the Witch Hunter Executioner afterwards. It's gonna get damaged, but I'm hoping that's gonna be the only card that keeps getting damaged. Although it's probably gonna get removed. I mean, I, I really despise what they did with the... The lead ability for pirates, it basically breaks the entire um, counter you originally had for pirates. Because now it's a very aggressive, very protected archetype, which is just weird. Well, that's fine. I can actually use Horse and Freak Show here. Because I'm going to get seven coins, but I'm going to have to use six. Yeah. Hmm. Seems like bait to me. You know what, I'm going to use Horses Freak Show just to get rid of Coral. Probably not the most efficient option, because I could have bountied that as well. But I can still kill the longship with Hysteria. And that gets me more coins. So Hammond is putting that on the other side of the board, and that of course is going to damage that card now. Purge is not an option yet, um, but I can do Hysteria. There are no other bounties for me here. Uh, so it's a bit of a risk using Hysteria now. Um, but yeah, there we go. Longship gone. So no other source of damage for them. Uh, so they're up to two armor only, I think. There's only two armor on cards just yet. Because you can see that with Hammond as well. Hammond only does not have armor. And then we got Croc. Uh, Croc is gonna get you crap. No, he's not. I was gonna yeet... Croc, but I can't. I don't have the coins to yeet Croc. Gonna have to do something really weird here. And then I'm gonna use my Witch Hunter Executioner. Yeah, I'm gonna use my Witch Hunter Executioner just to get two extra coins. And now I can yeet Croc. And we got a Gutting Slash, which is actually fine, because Gutting Slash does not damage my unit there. I am gonna yeet. Yeet that boy. Yeet him over here to the other side of the board, and I can then damage Hammond with Krach. And that kind of flipped the tables. I mean, of course, I don't have any ships or pirates, so I can't really use the other abilities of Krach. But still, he does one damage every two turns. And they can now not resurrect this card, so... Again, win-win for me. 
They can also not use their, le their leader ability to damage Philippa, because she's just going to die, so that is also a win. And we get Burna. Okay. Um, the one thing I'm still missing was the Brute. So this is fine, I think, even if... Unless there's two card cards that I could have discarded. I think it's fine for now. Oh, we get Nothing even. Ooh, wow. So that means Octavia Hale can pull the Brute. And I can, of course, get rid of the King of Beggars. Still giving us the benefit here. This is a weird match. I still only have one Witch Hunter on the board, which means that Purge only does four damage. Unless... Now, of course, that's going to be little Hofru. I feel like I need to use the Brute just to get out of the pickle here. So this puts us to five for Hammond. I can use the Brute, which is going to be 14 and definitely giving me the advantage. And our opponent has carry over now, so it's probably not the best choice to spend this card now. Yeah, but if I don't, I break a few cards here, so yeah, I should definitely use um, the Brute now. It's a good bleed, but probably not as good as I thought it was going to be. Uh, there's Morkvark still, they could use that. Yeah, there we go. On the Brute, but it's not spectacular, it's five points. Uh, I'm still ahead, even. Uh, and now, I actually do five damage with Purge. Um, meaning that I get another bounty on something else. So that's probably going to be a bounty on, yeah, Burna. Burna or the Hafu. And I don't need to spend my coins. I'm still ahead and I could just use Graydon to finish this off. And I still have Savola next. And we get Royal Decree. And Royal Decree into Chenge. Chenge is going to lock something. We're not going to get any more damages. Or maybe from the rain, but that would be a bit weird. Okay, we're going to get that. It's not going to matter at all. I don't even need to use the Tribute ability on... Yeah, I don't even need to use the Tribute ability on Graydon. I can't spend the coins, but it is enough. There we go. That is enough. Because uh, I don't have any bleeding, I could still use this. It's even two points difference then, so that is fine. I have full coins for next turn. And I have card advantage. That was weird. Just the Philippa switch was enough. Philippa is such a powerful card against Caliga. It's basically why I put this card in there. Because uh, Philippa is the, the, the most important card in this deck, I think, for if you're playing against Caliga. Do I need to purify? Maybe to get rid of Rupture... Professor is only 4 damage, but I can supplement that with the uh, leader ability, so bloody good fun can go. And I'm going to get the King of Baggers. So, King of Baggers... Ooh, it's still at 12. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I can do that with Professor. Um, that is actually fine. So I'm going to actually get rid of uh, Kalkstein as well, and we get a witch under execution. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, which is sad, because I'm going to have to use the Witch Hunter Executioner first now. Uh, since I start. The Witch Hunter Executioner first. I'm guessing I'm going to get at least one body. Next. Yeah, there we go, the ship. And so they can kill the Executioner with that. That is fine. Uh, I need to use the Tribute with the Professor. Uh, so, like this. And I need to use the Tribute, because otherwise I don't have a Spender by the end of the, the round here. So that gives us... Yeah, we lose two coins there, if you were counting. Um, that's not that much of a problem. We get... Oh, we get little Hofru. We get little Hofru. Um, I could bounty that, but I'm going to do that in a minute. Um, or do I do that now? Yeah, I'm going to do that now. Let's just bounty the little Hofru. And that's going to be it. We definitely won this. There's no way that our opponent can get over that. Because, I mean, I have nine coins in the bag and the leader ability and Savola. So even with Fukushima, that's not going to make any difference. Coral, drawing a card, discarding a card. If they're lucky, it's one of the cards that they can use, but no. And we get some more rain. 
Oh boy. Um, so yeah, Savola into pay tribute. King of Beggars pops out, and now we can do this. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. I was just going to see how far I was going to get, but I think it was 40 points plus by the, the time that we were done. I think that showed off the power of this deck quite, quite nicely. So uh, we, we beat Monsters, we beat Northern Realms. Um, again, I, I definitely beat uh, like Alumni Mages with this just as easily. Um, just because of the fact that you can kill every mage that's coming onto the board. Uh, and usually they don't have a direct kill for the Vigilante, so you always have just enough damage to kill the uh, next mage that's coming up. Um, so you can just keep them from ever having a valid alumni. And you can even use the Scoundrel to get rid of a single alumni from their deck, which was, a, which was what I was going to do uh, until I saw that it was Commander's deck instead. Um, then against Scaliger, we got a little bit lucky that our opponent was a little bit too eager to use their most powerful cards pretty early. Uh, and we got to yoink that uh, that croc to our side of the board as well. Um, so yeah, this is the Witch Hunt deck. You can find it on the Plague Vent website using the link in the description down below. Again, don't forget to upvote it because every bit of, uh, well, just support is really, really appreciated. And that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it as always. Uh, I really want to thank you all for your support as always as well. Um, next up, we'll probably do a uh, uh, an Insectoid Monsters deck is probably my next thing. Uh, and then we'll just see where that leads us further on. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, go ahead and do that as well. So you can keep up to date on any uh, new things I'm planning to work on. Because uh, I uh, discuss a lot of quant related things on Twitch, uh, on Twitter as well. Uh, I've also started, so Twitter is at Rovinuts, by the way, T-R-O-V-N-U-T. Um, simple as that. I've also started to stream a little bit more regularly. Uh, and you'll catch that on my related Twitch channel since I won't be using YouTube anymore for streaming. Um, that being said, thanks again enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwendage. Goodbye and stay nutty.